How's it going, everyone? Mega Masher is here, and welcome back, Masher Army. I salute you. We are back with another Pokemon review video, and in this video, we are going to be reviewing one of my favorite fifth generation Pokemon known as Gigalith. Now, I often like to refer to Gigalith as the rock type version of Metagross because of the fact that this Pokemon has the same attack stat and the same defense stat as Metagross and both hit disgustingly hard. So, with Gigalith, it has the rock typing, which means, allow me to highlight this real quick, you resist the likes of fire, flying, normal, and poison. That's pretty awesome. But what isn't awesome is the amount of weaknesses that this thing has. So, its weaknesses are fighting, grass, ground, steel, and water. Five weaknesses. And those happen to all be common, too. But, you know what, if you know how to build teams around Gigalith, you should be fine. Plus, this thing is in the PU tier, so that means that this thing is going to be outshining a lot of shit in the PU tier, in my opinion. So, the first ability that it gets is known as Sand Force. And Sand Force is an ability that, under the effects of Sandstorm, boosts certain moves' power by 30%. And, what I mean by certain moves, is certain move types. And... Those types are Rock, Ground, and Steel. Now, I actually built a set around that uh, ability, and you could say it's a little bit of a gimmick, but it could work. However, I'd highly recommend you use it on a Sandstorm team in order for it to work. The next ability is known as Sturdy. This ability, Sturdy, is often the more superior ability, and what this does is it allows for you to live any hit at full health, that would otherwise one-shot you. And you're also immune to one-hit KO moves, such as Guillotine, Sheer Force, Horn Drill, Fissure, all those moves. Take a look at the stats here real quick. So it has 85 on the HP, 135 on the attack, 130 on the defense. Holy fuck, that's awesome. 60 on the special attack, 80 on the special defense, and 25 on the speed. So as you see here with the special defense... Uh, it was 70 last generation, but now it got bumped up to 80. And plus, with the introduction of Assault Vest, this thing can actually be quite the tank. Not just on the physical side, but on the special side, too. The 25 speed, well, obviously this screams Trick Room, right? So, yeah, this Pokemon's going to be dirt slow. But if you have this Pokemon under the effects of Trick Room, it can be surprisingly fast. So, let's navigate our way into Pokemon Showdown real quick. And show you a couple sets that we got here. So the first set here is actually a set that I had built just seconds ago. Uh, before uh, making this video. So the ability, sorry, the move, not move, what the fuck, I'm getting jumbled up. Ah! The item is going to be Assault Vest. And what this does is it locks you into damaging moves only. But it boosts your special defense by 50%, which is pretty awesome. And as for the ability... We're actually going to want to go with Sand Force. So the first thing that we got is Rock Blast. And you can go with Stone Edge for more immediate power. But the reason for Rock Blast is because of the fact that it has more accuracy. And it's a multi-hit move. Which means that you can break through Sturdy. You can break through Focus Sashes. You can break through Substitutes. All that good stuff. It's just fucking awesome all around. Up next, we got Earthquake. And... Ground-type moves with rock-type moves, that right there provides a lot of coverage. And this combination hits very hard, and there's very few types and Pokemon that can switch in safely to either one of these moves. Earthquake, base 100 power, such a powerful move. And I, I remember back in first generation, man, when I uh, was able to teach my ride on Earthquake, I was just like, fuck this shit, Earthquake everything! Oh man, I was pumped. Up next, we're going to go with Iron Head, because not only uh, is it a really good steel type move, but it also benefits from the Sand Force ability if you are under the effects of Sandstorm. Same with Earthquake, and same with Rock Blast. Now, the last move, we got Explosion, and the beautiful thing about this is this, this is an attacking move. And if Gigalith has pretty much outlived its usefulness in battle, well, you can just ba ba boom and just take another Pokemon down with you, or severely damage it with Explosion. Base 250 power, that's fucking amazing. So let's just take a look at the EV spread here real quick. 
So we're nearly maxed on the HP with 248. We got 252 into attack, and we got 8 into special defense just to give you a nice little boost in the special defense and also have a larger special defense all around thanks to the Assault Fest boost. And we'll go with an Adamant Nature. That way, with maximum investment in your attack, you're hit it hitting well over 400. That is scary. That is... That's not scary. That's just annoying. So, let's go to a set here that is pretty much going to be like your a standard attacking slash utility set. So, the first move that we got is going to be Stealth Rock. And what Stealth Rock does... Obviously, it lays an entry hazard out, and it damages Pokemon according to their type. So, that means that if Pokemon that have a weakness to Rock-type moves, they're going to be dealt quite a bit of damage switching in. So, either way, Stealth Rock's such a good move. Up next, we'll go with Stone Edge. Now, you can actually go with Rock Blast. Let me just add this in here real quick. You can go with Rock Blast to have the added benefit of better accuracy and the potential to break sturdy break focus sashes break substitutes because it's a multi-hit move it's just fucking awesome up next i've decided i want to put in earthquake because earthquake with rock blast like i said ground and rock type moves form amazing coverage that offers uh the challenge to the opponent to switch in safely now you can go with superpower that way you hit things slightly harder, such as Caracosta, such as Swine. both of them are in the uh, PU tier. Not to mention things like Ponyard, Probopass, you know, all those Pokemon. Uh, and lastly, we're going to go with Toxic to allow you to be a Pokemon to cripple walls that try to switch in and tank up your hits. And this right here just puts them on a limited timer. So... Going with the item, we're going to be going with Leftovers to allow you to have passive recovery at the end of each turn. In this situation, we will be going with Sturdy as this offers you uh, a guaranteed survival if a Pokemon was to come in and deliver an overpowered hit to you. That would otherwise knock you out if either you didn't have Sturdy or if Sturdy wasn't intact. So, we're going to go real quick on the EV spread here. We're going to maximize the HP, maximize the attack, both the 252 EVs apiece... And we're going to put four into defense just to give you one more defense point. And we'll go with an admin nature. And there you go. Look at them beautiful ass stats. This thing meant to set up entry hazards, meant to set up some toxic, but it's also meant to set up the pain and dish it out to your opponents. So that is actually pretty much all I got to say about this set, about Gigalith. Gigalith is fucking awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed the video, then give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed me getting all brain and tongue-tied earlier, I'll give it another thumbs up. And if you enjoy content like this and like a whole bunch of other videos that involve me going crazy, well then feel free to subscribe to Mega Masher and the Mega Masher Army as we are a tightly knit pack that just keeps growing and growing and growing bigger and bigger every single day. We are an awesome community. You guys are all awesome. You guys are Huge ass reasons why my dedication and passion for all of you grow each and every single day. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys have yourselves a damn good one. This is your Commander Masher saluting you and signing off.